Hello everybody and welcome back to Typical City. Mateus Nunes is on strike. This isn't really breaking news in truth. This is news that we've been familiar with for the past 48 hours. In fact, he's been on strike since Friday. My concern is how the player is conducting himself, his overall behaviour, and does this spell trouble for Manchester City? There are so many angles and different alternative ways you can look at this. There's plenty of avenues to go down, and credible arguments can be made for both parties, depending on which side of the fence you're sitting on. I think a lot of the youth will look at this and go, go for it, mate. Go on strike. Get your move. Be opportunistic. Take life by the scruff of the neck and get from it what you can at any one opportunistic moment. I understand that, but there are ways to conduct yourself in life. There are so many examples of players over the years spitting their dummy out and going out on strike. Now, we've seen it with two City players that have joined us and had more than reasonable successful careers at Manchester City. Raheem Sterling did it at Liverpool. And that got to a point where A.D. Ward, Raheem Sterling's agent, as a 20-year-old, okay, A.D. Ward's taken to the papers and calling Jamie Carragher a knob, which is might be an accurate terminology for the individual. And some of you uh, might well agree that Jamie Carragher might well be a knob. But is that any way to conduct yourself in business? Is that any way to conduct yourself as a professional? This is a tw That was a 20-year-old taking on Liverpool Football Club over a contract. Okay, So we need to look at the dynamic of club power versus player power and how the, the, the pendulum has very much swung in recent years towards player power when back in the day, 30, 40 years ago, the contracts that these players were signing were for a joke wage at times and in the introduction of the Bosman rule and things and go and check the history of football and understand how far things were back in the day were very much in favour of clubs. Clubs had all the power. Now, I, I think we're, we, we are somewhere in the middle, but there are slowly little signs in the last decade or so of players speaking out and setting a precedent and setting an example for other players who are coming through that if you do kick off you can actually get your move now the question for me is how professional does City want to conduct themselves because I think the goalposts and standards at Manchester City Football Club have changed I'm very much looking at this trying to look from a football fan because I love the game I want to I want the game to be the, the foremost the thought for everybody in this particular video ultimately I'm a City fan so I'm biased towards City and anything that benefits City I'm going to swing towards that behind closed doors in truth I'm going to okay City win and I'm okay with it but there is long-term ramifications for poor player behaviour and if they're doing it now what's to say they won't do it in two or three years but there is a ceiling in football there is a ceiling and Manchester City are punching at that ceiling we're there we are the ceiling of football and you could arguably say there's Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. I'd say that's about it uh, in terms of club stature now, because we're never going to do business with United or any local rivals in the Premier League. When I say local, I mean local to the UK. In terms of rivals in this country, we're never going to do business with them. So you have to look abroad. And then you're immediately Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich. That's it. They're, and, and you're, they're arguably sideways moves, you know. But you go back to the standards of Manchester City Football Club on the whole and go back to the Carlos Tevez situation, for example, who, by the way, refused to play. But under instructions at the same time, because Mancini is the one who said go back to Argentina, so he did. He did go back to Argentina. The question was his suspension was finished and he still didn't come back. He was asked to come back from his suspension and he refused. He stayed in Argentina and played a bit of golf. And then he came waltzing back when we were in desperate need of goals in the final stages of the season. And we are fickle, aren't we? As football fans, we're very, very fickle. We swing from moment to moment and opinion to opinion. Wherever the wind's blowing, that's the way we tend to go as football fans, isn't it? That's the game. That's the way we play, unfortunately. But I do think that we, the City in particular have set a precedent now and a standard that is above the idea of welcoming someone who's just disrespected the club, refused to play for the club and spat their dummy out over something that was as trivial as not coming off the bench in one particular game. 
And City fans, we welcomed him back and we cheered Tevez on when he scored that hat-trick at Carrow Road against Norwich in a 6-1 win, a very much needed three points. We got them. Carlos Tevez pulls out a blinder of a performance and even mocks the situation by celebrating his hat-trick goal with a golf club swing, you know? So, I mean, that's mockery. And we all cheered it. We all cheered it. Now, I think the, the, the standards of the club have changed. I don't think we're that desperate anymore. I think that the, the way the club operates and... If you want to leave or you want to spit your dummy out, off you go, João Cancelo to buy to buy in Munich. See you later. In a bit, mate. No problem. Not we're not going to be held to ransom by any one player, and that's exactly the right approach to do at the top level. You look at Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo for example, who storms off down the touchline as a 37-year-old, totally disrespecting Ten Hag. He wasn't brought onto the pitch. He was hoping to come on as a substitute, but instead he storms off down the touchline, walks down the tunnel before the final whistle. Can you imagine? Fergie accepting that. Can you imagine Alex Ferguson on the touchline? Can you imagine Cristiano Ronaldo playing for that club after he did that and, and if Fergie was on, in the dugout? Not a chance. Not a chance. Because their standards have lowered. Their, as a club, their stature and their impact over club versus player power has completely shifted. You look at Kylian and Mbappe. Okay? What a joke. He is PSG. He owns PSG. He owns that football club. He runs the roost, rules the roost in that situation. The player power of Mbappe versus PSG is totally unbalanced. And we're seeing it now. He's refusing we've been refusing to play. He's seen out his contract, wants to get his move, and it's just disgusting. I think it's disgusting that a player can now have that amount of power over. Now, obviously, Mbappe and Ronaldo are at the top of the game, but this is Mateus Nunes we're talking about. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm hoping this is a player... You, you can go further back. Chris Sutton did it years ago. So many old-school players have done it back in the day, and you speak to them now about it as adults who have matured and grown a little wiser and a bit more of an understanding of how to conduct yourself in the in life. It's not just football and business. This is how you conduct yourself in life. You, you put, put your big boy pants on, you've signed a contract, and you, you should have learned how to read the fucking contract before you decided you changed your mind 10 minutes later. That's not how life works, unfortunately. You have to accept the consequences <coughs> and the ramifications of all the decisions you make in life, especially if you're putting pen to paper, there are no two ways about it. But Chris Sutton, for example, he didn't. He refused to play. But you speak to him now. He's been interviewed since then, and he said he totally regrets it. And I guarantee you, the numerous players in five, ten years will talk about Ronaldo and his choice of actions and walking down the tunnel. I guarantee you, he'll regret it. He'll say that was a stupid thing to do. I should never have done it. This, the example that it sets. Now, Mateus Nunes spitting his dummy out and not playing for Wolves, you just hope it's the agent. You hope it's a sleazebag agent just getting into the ear of Nunes and saying, you have to, you have to. I've seen other City channels label Kane for doing it. Kane didn't do it. Kane did not turn up to train. He handed in a transfer request. That's extremely different, very different, and a respectable way to do it, the professional way to do it. You have stated your intentions without disrespecting the club. You have made your intentions clear, which Mateus Nunes can do that. Hand in a transfer request. Make it public that you no longer want to play for Wolves and you, you, you have intentions of leaving to join Manchester City. You can do that with a document. With a, with a formal transfer request, that's all that was needed, and it, you would be in the exact same situation now. Instead, you've got to bat away questions about your professionalism and how you conduct yourself going forward, because the question will be posed at some point, should he need to leave Manchester City? And the reason we are in such a privileged position to say that that may never happen is because we're the ceiling of football right now. There are only sideways moves. There are no real progressions. We're not a stepping stone club anymore. We are the elite. We are top of creme de la creme now, aren't we? You go against Real Madrid and Barcelona, that's it. That's the, We're on their level now of... The, uh, the attention that we can draw from players and the player pull power that we have, everyone wants to play from us. And Mares, who spat his dummy out, but he wanted to join Manchester City and leave Leicester. I thought it was a disgrace. I thought it was a shambolic way to conduct yourself. Now, obviously, Leicester was sticking their feet in the ground. That's the way he handled himself and chose to make those decisions. He went on to have a fantastic Manchester City career. And I've loved every minute of watching Riyad Mahrez. But there was a sour note to, to his arrival. I didn't enjoy the way he joined us. I don't like it. I just, I think it spells potential 
disaster. Thankfully, nothing ever came of it. He didn't ever want to leave until he got a move for more money. And I mean, those two things sort of go hand in hand a little bit there. I mean, I don't want to destroy the uh, legacy that Mara's left behind, but I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the way he entered the club. I've got no problems with the, the way he conducted himself as a Manchester City player. I thought he was fine. His attitude was decent. Nothing wrong there. The same can be said for Sterling. On his way out, though, Chelsea, it gets interviewed with Jeff Shreves. He's bad-mouthing City on his way out. So there you go, another little lapse in professionalism, you know. And there's another bad egg that we allowed in, mouthing off on his way out and bitching about City to Jeff Shreves and saying how the, the club's done this and that. Uh, it's just unacceptable. To me, I don't like it. I just don't like it. And it smells of something, Mateus Nunes. And this attitude, it doesn't sit right with me. The fact that City themselves are saying this is new to them. They weren't expecting him to do this. I think this has made this more complicated for everyone involved. I don't think there was a need to do it. I've sat on this for a couple of days. I've been well aware of it. The only reason you're hearing from it from me today is because I've just wanted to stew on it, you know. I really wanted to look at this and think about The second I heard it, I hoped it wasn't true. Now it clearly is true. He's refusing to play. The, for, he's not just training now. He's not even playing in the games anymore. He's, he's supposed to be playing against Blackpool in the League Cup. Not going to happen. He's not turning up there. I, I feel like he's going to get his move. As a, is it a result of this? I don't think it is. I think it would be easy to suggest it is. And I think that they were close to getting... They were in discussions. Why did he need to get involved? Why did he have to step in and and take actions into his own hands when there was so much runway left in the in the negotiation. There was so much runway left for the whole negotiation to take off and you land in Manchester, not a long flight. I know it literally isn't a flight, but in terms of uh, an analogy to describe it, it, there wasn't that far to go. You know, it's like we could quite easily have established an agreement between the two clubs and I still think they will. If anything, this has harmed his situation because if if there is a chance, and there is a reasonable chance that the deal falls through, what left now for him? You know, is he just going to go and sit in the reserves and just like become some some decorative uh, bit of decoration in training that does nothing? But they have to pay him. They have to pay him. The contract goes two ways. They have to pay him now. So it's a sour situation for everyone involved. And uh, ultimately, I, I wanted to say my piece on the way he's conducting himself. I've gone on a lot about professionalism on, on this channel and the club tends to really go for players that consider these factors and really take it uh, to, the, to a very serious level and how professionally they conduct themselves. I think the club now are, are only trying to sign good boys, as Pep Guardiola likes to say, and... Um, I agree. I agree with that approach. I think it's the right way to do business and it's proven because we are a success on the pitch and we are very much a success off the pitch as a result. But you start introducing players that can do these sort of things and behave in, in, in this manner. Yeah, it starts to... We've got Cancelo out the door and we're bringing another one in by the looks of it. So I'm not convinced by the player's attitude. As the player himself... I think he's a quality player in terms of where he's going to play. That's the biggest question for me. I do think he could play more advanced than people are suggesting. Everybody's saying he's going to be a Calvin Phillips replacement. Should Calvin Phillips leave? He doesn't want to leave. So why are we going for Nunes if Calvin Phillips doesn't want to leave? Are we just getting him anyway? I personally think he's going to play a little bit more advanced. He can play down the spine of a midfield, so I do believe that there is um, versatility there with Mateus Nunes. I think he could come on and, and play in Rodri's role, in Kovacic's role, and even play in De Bruyne's role, potentially, because he does have the all-round ability to do that. But this deal is starting to get more and more complicated due to his actions, and I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it, so I've made my feelings clear. Blues, what do you think? Do you think this is the right way to conduct yourself? Do you think this is an, an appropriate way to conduct yourself? Do you think it's going to work? Or do you think he's going to end up rotting in the reserves of Wolves as a result of this behaviour? Get your comments in below. I'd love to hear them. Like and subscribe. Typical City is the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now. 